Hi everyone, welcome to um, our Inside Uni Sports Q&A. Today we're going to be talking to athletes from both Oxford and Cambridge and they're going to be sharing their experiences um, playing sports at uni at various levels. So yeah, let's just get straight into the introductions. So everyone's going to tell us, tell us who they are, what subject they do and their sporting experiences. So over to you, Rosie. Hi, I'm Rosie. I'm a second year geographer at FITS and I do athletics at university level. So I specialise in heavy throws. So I mainly do shot put. So I started athletics around five years ago now. Um, and what I love the most about it is like the variety of events. So I think there's something like 44 events in athletics, which is crazy. So it's like there's definitely something for everyone in there. Alice? Hi, I'm Alice. I also do athletics. I'm going into my third year studying maths at Oxford. I'm also on the uni team, except I'm a, mi a middle distance runner, although I also do a few other events, um, such as triple jump to help the team out. I do athletics because I just really love running. I ran all throughout school and joined a club in secondary school and competed all through that. I'm on the Blues team for uh, athletics for the uni, but I also play netball for my college, so I have experience at both levels. Fran? Hi everyone, I'm Fran and I play netball at university level. Um, I study medicine at Brasenose College, Oxford, and yeah, I've really enjoyed netball in my first year and then I'm excited to continue that in my second year I've been doing netball for as long as I can remember. You know, it's one of those sports that you do at primary, secondary school. But I started doing it competitively, probably towards the age of 16 onwards. And I've kind of pursued that at university. I guess my favorite thing about netball is definitely the team element. Um, there's a, definitely a sense of camaraderie between players um, and I've enjoyed it so much. And I've actually picked up role as the Access Outreach and Charities Officer on the Netball Committee. So I'm excited to engage in like the committee executive side of things. Ted? Hi, uh, I'm Ted. Uh, I'm studying computer science, um, going into my third year um, at FITS in Cambridge. Um, I basically play every sport that I can at the college level because I really like sport, but I'm not particularly good at it. Um, so I uh, captained the uh, netball team Last year, also play some football and cricket and hockey when I can. I'm probably mainly going to talk about netball because I was captain of that, so I kind of have seen what goes on. Um, I started playing that um, literally when I got to uni. So I think that's a pretty good example of, uh, you know, how you can um, pick up a sport, like, at the start of uni. And what I love about it is um, just, it's a great start to the day, I always find, like, just to, you know, meet some, like, it's a really casual atmosphere, just, like, especially with college sports, like see some people at the start of the day, have a chat, play a bit of sport. It's a really nice start to the day. Thanks, Ted. So over to you, Yusuf. Hi, guys. So my name's Yusuf, and I'm a medic going into his third year doing medicine, and I'm the secretary of the Powerlifting Society. So being completely honest with you, I wasn't sporty at all during secondary school, um, and I actually picked up powerlifting in my first year. And what I love most about it is the community aspect of everyone cheering each other on in the big lifts and actually week in, week out, being able to improve and seeing your improvement. Thank you. Um, so over to Leona. Hi, I'm Leona. I'm going into <clears throat> my second year studying sociology at Fitzwilliam College, Cambridge. I also wasn't very sporty in secondary school. Um, even in the first term of uni, I wasn't very sporty, but then I took up rowing and I now do that on a college level. Um, so as I said, I'd never done rowing before. I just started it because I thought that it would be like the typical Cambridge experience and like, why not try it? Um, and I really enjoy it because I like waking up early anyway, which is a bit rare in a uni student, but <laughs> we get to just go out on the river and it's just really relaxing and peaceful. And it's a good break from the sometimes hectic nature of uni. And finally, Jed. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jed. I study land economy at Fitzwilliam College, Cambridge. Uh, my main sport is football. I play that on a college and a university level. 
Um, in secondary school, it's, it's a sport I've always played before. It's always something that I loved and I, it's something I wanted to continue when I went uh, into university. And I think the favorite, what I love the most about football on a, on a college level is just the, the, competi the, the competitive nature, especially at Fitzwilliam, people take it seriously. Uh, and then at, you know, on uni level, I think I like it, the tactical nature of things. Um, people don't just come just to play football. The people have it. They want to improve themselves. I really like that, that, that nature of the sport. Thanks, Jed. I'll just pass it over to our, my co-host, Natalie, and she's going to ask them some questions. So, hi, I'm Natalie. I study history at Cambridge, and I'm also on the Inside Uni team. Uh, and so I'm going to start the questions today. So the first one is um, to all our panellists. Um, could anyone start talking about Freshers' Week and how they join the society they're now in? Um, what was that like? And were you scared or nervous or excited when joining that sports team? So I was definitely quite nervous about joining, even though I'd done it athletics for quite a few years. Um, so luckily I was in contact with some members of the club before I arrived. So with athletics, like there's the opportunity for freshers to kind of sign up to mailing lists, join WhatsApp groups before you arrive, which I think is quite nice. Um, but I was a little nervous. So we had like a taster day, which usually like happens at the start of term. But like there was absolutely nothing to be nervous about whatsoever because as soon as I got there, everyone was just so lovely and friendly and smiley. And like I instantly felt like a member of the club, even though I'd literally just been there for 10 minutes. Um, and then we also have like a Freshers Varsity match, which was really fun to do. And it was great to kind of meet people that way and get to know like the other members that I joined with. Thanks, Rosie. That's great. And uh, would anyone else like to comment on how they felt? Hi, um, OUAC, so the Athletics in Oxford, have a pre-season camp and so I went along early and I got to meet um, some of the other incoming freshers but also some of the current members of the team and that was really nice because it meant that when I turned up to Oxford um, for freshers week and the first week of term there were already some friendly faces there so although I was nervous at first going into the pre-season camp. Everyone was so lovely. I felt welcome from the very beginning. Okay, now we're going to move on to some of our like main questions. So the first theme we're going to focus on is academics because obviously we go to Oxford and Cambridge and academics is the focus of our universities. So the first question is, how much time do you dedicate to sports during the week? I'll pass that over to Fran. Yeah, so definitely Oxford has definitely been like an academic shock, especially doing something such as medicine, which has immense contact hours. Um, however, you get to fall into your routine quite quickly. Um, I must admit that first term was very kind of almost hectic and stressful to me because not only was I kind of adapting to university life, but I was also kind of adapting to balancing not only my academics, um, but also netball. So um, for me, I train about four to five times a week and I have matches every Wednesday, um, which is sometimes fun, but also quite stressful. However, as term progressed, I definitely fell into being more efficient with my time because doing sports forces you to be more efficient with the time you have for the academic side of things. And by the end of it, I was a pro at prioritizing tasks, balancing things and just kind of balancing my academic with sport life. Ed, do you have anything to add on? Yeah, sure. So I just thought it'd be useful to have the perspective from college sports as well. Um, I think the great thing with that is you really can just commit as much time to it as you want. Like um, you can, you know, I mean, that, that probably varies like the higher level. So like if it's an important game and you say, oh, I don't want to turn up because I've got a fair bit of work, it's not ideal. But like generally you can not turn up you can turn up it's really flexible you can commit as much time to college sport as you want um good thing is also if you play for a bad team like i do you don't have to train so that's a another thing so I'll probably only commit like two to four hours a week to sport and it's just really just nice thing to have on the side just to you know because everyone's got to do a bit of work but you want to be doing something else that keeps you a bit sane so it's, it's really good Great. So the next question we've got is um, along the same line is how do you balance sports with lectures and other academic work? So I'll pass this over to Leona to start with. 
Um, so again, I do rowing at a college level, which is what most people do. Um, and they are usually early morning sessions. So it was kind of easier to balance with academics because usually it was before I started my lectures. And because of the nature of my degree, I don't have that many contact hours. So I didn't find it too difficult to balance. I'd say it's mostly about getting a regular schedule in and when you're doing your work. So you can't really do an all nighter if you do a sport like rowing because <laughs> then you'll just be waking up really early and everything will be off balance. So I say I just stuck to stay, keep, um, getting up early every day so that I could get up for practice and be fine. Thanks, Leona. And um, Yusuf, you got anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. So it can be definitely difficult to try and juggle them all together. I'd say, like Fran said, it does come down to prioritising your time. Um, I love using a Google Calendar just to help balance what I do to plan things ahead. I think it's really important to be proactive and just think, OK, how much time do we have? I'm quite lucky with powerlifting because it's very flexible. You can train actually whenever you want to. And so this can be very, very nice to actually have that flexibility to then arrange it around your schedule. Um, but absolutely, it just comes down to prioritising and working efficiently as possible. Thank you. So the next question is, do you have any away games during term time? If so, how do you handle not being at uni for a certain amount of time? And I'll pass this over to Alice. Yeah. Hi. So I'm doing athletics. So it's a bit different from the team sports where lots of the games are on a Wednesday. But I often have competitions where I'm away for a day in the weekend. And a couple of times a year, I have Bucks competitions, so the inter-uni competitions, where I might be away for a couple of days. And it's perfectly manageable, but the key here is time management. You know in advance that you're going to have a day out of Oxford. So as long as you keep on top of your work before that, you'll be absolutely fine. And these competitions don't happen very regularly. So if you are behind on a problem sheet or something like that, if you pop your tutor a message and let them know and explain that it is a um, one-off time, then you'll be absolutely fine too. That's great. And the next question we have is, do you ever struggle with work because of the time you spend playing sports? And I'll pass this to Jed. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't very good at managing my time during the first two terms. Like, I'll be rushing off to supervisions after training, rushing off home to complete work after training. So it was like, kind of, how do you get that balance right? Um, I think it's just about, because you know in advance, you kind of try have to prepare yourself, your schedule in advance uh, to, to cater for that. I think one thing that, that helped me is just having a timetable. I know it sounds kind of back to school kind of thing, but it does help. Um, so yeah, having a timetable. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our next theme, which is kind of based on fitness. So how do you compare university sports to playing sports at sixth form slash secondary school? And I'll pass that over to Fran. So for me, coming to university and playing on like the university netball team, was definitely a shock in terms of the level of fitness that was required of me. Um, I guess it all came down to kind of the level of commitment that was required for the two types of kind of levels. So at sixth form or when I was playing for my local team in my city, um, commitment wasn't really a big thing. You could probably miss out on training sessions and everyone knew that on certain days they were the fitness or cardio sessions. So they, they, they miss those out. Whereas at university, they require a lot more commitment um, from you, especially with the team sports. And it meant that I had to go to more fitness sessions. And yeah, it was hard at first trying to adapt to that. However, as time goes on, especially when you're doing it alongside other students who might not have been used to that level of fitness, you do grow and you grow together, which is quite nice. Um, I guess comparing sixth form to university level, I guess Another thing that shocked me is the level of independency that's required of you. Um, so at sixth form, you're kind of like encouraged by your coaches or your teachers, where as a university, you don't really have that input from staff members. There's a lot more independency and you do it all by yourself. We only have one training session, one to two training sessions a week with our coach. Um, so I guess that was quite a change, um, but I have definitely enjoyed it. And my fitness has got a lot better due to university level sport. And the next question we have is, 
For people who are working on their fitness, do you think that sports societies are judgmental places? And can we start with Rosie? So I can only speak from my own experience of athletics, but I'd say absolutely not at all. So CUAC, which is the Cambridge University Athletics Club, like we welcome people of all abilities. So a lot of our members have picked up athletics whilst they're at university and they're now on the Blues team and compete in the national competitions. Um, so it's really common for people to join without ever having done it before and just kind of showing up to the taster session and just giving it a go. Um, and we also have a competition called Cuppers. So Cuppers is an inter-college competition. So it's like college level sport. And I would best describe it as like an adult sports day. So like it's kind of a competition where you pick up points and there was a lot of people like myself included that literally just showed up on the day and tried out sports. So I did long jump and never ever done it before. And like the people who are more experienced are kind of there to help you and like give you advice. And to say like at the club, like because there's people there of all levels, the more experienced athletes are like they're there to support you. The committee members, the women's and men's captains, they're there to support you and help you grow as an athlete and like the like chance for development is like crazy like I've said we've had people go from complete beginners to blue standard throwers so I'd say there's absolutely no judgment whatsoever. Thanks Rosie and Yusuf you got anything to add? Mm. From my own experience with the powerlifting society it's a really great community where we have people from all ability from people that have never squatted before to people that like to do a bit of deadlifting casually as gym goers to rugby players so and anywhere in between so we've got a huge range of different people and it's not judgmental at all because actually we're learning from each other and it's really nice to be able to have someone to be able to spot you, to be able to say, oh, actually, this is a technique that can be useful or not. And so I've actually just found it to be really communal. You just learn from each other. And that's what I love about it. Thank you. So the next question is, um, I played netball for my sixth form. How willing would the Oxford netball team be <laughs> to accept me on the team? That's very, very directed. So over to you, Fran. Um, so yeah, this is a really good question and I guess going into university is something that I thought about myself. I was quite lucky to come across the Oxford University Netball Club OUNC Instagram page where they kind of give a lot of kind of information about what's going on regarding trials, regarding training. Um, so I found out before going to university about what the trials were going to be like and it was a three-day trial session so relatively intense. Um, however, there were a lot of people that turned at um, um, out and there were girls from all sorts of abilities so people who played netball at national level to people who just didn't six forms people who'd never done it before um, and I guess the trial system is there so that you can kind of pick out people who the captains think would be best suited to the netball teams and before that they don't really ask anything about your prior level of netball um, so it's very kind of as unbiased as possible so kind of doing um, netball at college level or at um, sixth form level won't really affect your chances. It's just based on your abilities on the three days of trials, really. Um, so, yeah. Um, the next question we have is, do you have to be super athletic to play sports at university? So I'll pass that over to Leona. Um, I definitely say no. Well, in my personal experience, anyway, I definitely was not very fit. I had been maybe early secondary school and then things just dropped off. I tried to do like maybe some of the typical like gym workouts but coming to uni I definitely was not very athletic. I think joining a sports society has helped me to be motivated by the people around me and um, I remember my first race was very difficult because you can't just stop when you're tired because it is a team sport. You have to just try and keep going but I think it's definitely an opportunity to improve your fitness, but it's definitely not a base requirement, especially if you're doing it on college level. And Alice, have you got anything to add? Yeah, the great thing about doing sport at a college level is it's all for fun and there's something for everyone um, in there, whether you're playing ultimate frisbee or netball, you can try a new sport that you've never done before. So I've played a game of football for Worcester, having never played football before other than a few times in PE at probably primary school. But beyond that, you can also join a university team. Lots of teams have a development squad. 
for people who are new to the sport and want to pick up some of the skills. In athletics, you can join as a complete beginner and we'll take you through and train you up. And, and again, like in Kuak, we have people who have gone from beginners when joining the club um, on to be in the Blues team. But you can also take the sport less seriously and just come along and train with us for fun too. That's great. So the next section of questions we have are on socialising and the kind of less serious aspects of being part of the sports team at university. So the first question is, are sports societies a good place to meet people? And can we start with Rosie? So I'd say absolutely. Um, I've met some of my closest friends through athletics and I have friends in my year and I also have friends who are doing PhDs. So like I have friends all over the place. Um, and it's just been so lovely to have those older friends to kind of offer that support and guidance whenever I need it. Um, and even though athletics is an individual sport, there's a lot of kind of friendships that are made through your squad that you train with. So I train with the heavy throw squad and we have like termly socials where we might go out for a meal or, you know, we have like, um, like weekly socials with, the women's and men's um, like athletic societies um, and like because it is a team sport at the end of the day like competing against Oxford in our varsity match like there is such a team like spirit that goes on this sense of community and the people are what I love most about athletics and it is pro like I am biased here but it is probably one of the most welcoming clubs in Cambridge because you know people literally just go along to train in for the social aspect and don't really have much interest in becoming a blues level thrower they just want to go and see their friends every week so we welcome everyone and everyone's just so lovely so yes absolutely that's great and um, Alice can you add anything on that yes I'm also athletic so I can only echo all of that the best thing about the club is definitely the people it is an individual sport but as a team, you're working towards the team goal of the varsity matches against Cambridge, as well as your individual goals. Uh, it's a, it's absolutely amazing. So I can only echo everything that Rosie said. Um, can I just say, I love the subtle competitiveness between Oxford and Cambridge that's going on. Um, this is so funny. So the next question is, um, what sports do you recommend for like incoming students to try when they come to university? And I'll pass that over to Jed. Yeah, I, I didn't try any new sports, which is quite unfortunate. But anyway, if you wanted to try a new sport, I would say try something that you haven't done before or you, you can't do when you go back home. Um, for example, if you haven't done kickboxing or, I don't know, some eccentric sport that you, you haven't really thought of, um, but yeah, if I was to try a new sport, I'll definitely try uh, rowing, rowing again. Yeah, because I know I, I'll never do that before. But yeah. Um, yeah, kickboxing is great. I can tell you as someone who's tried it. Um, it requires a lot of flexibility and it's, it's great. Yeah, it's great to see yourself progress. Um, like um, the coach that coaches us at um, Cambridge, he's very flexible. He did the splits and I was, I was shook beyond compare. So yeah, um, I'll pass the question on to Ted. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, sure. Completely agree with um, what Jed said about take advantage of, yeah, it's, the unis are big. So there's like a society for like every sport under the sun. So just anything that you've ever thought about, just give that a try. Then also, again, the college sport level, um, it's great to, um, because, you know, ev like, um, like Alice said earlier, everyone plays it for fun. So you can turn up with like zero experience. Like my first netball game, I got recruited like on the doorstep, walking back into my accommodation. Like somebody said, oh, we're short by one player. Do you want to play? And I was like, well, yeah, like just, just literally try any sport, even if you thought you like would never like it. Just rock up to like one of their games at college level and just see how it goes. You never know. You might like really like it. Just try every sport you can at college level. And the next question we have is what social events do you have for sports teams? And I'll pass that on to Ted. Yeah, sure. So again, only speaking from college because I'm not good enough, um, but that tends to be quite a uh, casual events, really. Um, it really does vary from team to team. So you'll get like with a football team, often like, yeah, have 
Hudson Theatres and a pizza after a win. Um, the football team I play for has like a yearly curry when some like people who used to play for us come back. Um, it's it's things like that. It really does vary from the team, but it, it at the college level it tends not to be too organised. It tends just to be like people getting together for like a nice chat. The uni level, I know there's um, there tends to be more organised social events, especially like between the teams. But I don't know a huge amount about that. But with the college level, yeah, it tends to be just like quite casual social events. Generally not really based around like drinking or anything just like going out for a meal or whatever like that just getting together for a chat so the next section we're going to cover is about facilities and the um kind of facilities that are at each university for playing sports so the first question is what is it like rowing and do you have to row as it is renowned in cambridge and we can start with leona for that um so I definitely just want to start by saying you don't have to row because you're at Oxford or Cambridge. I know I said before that I wanted to because it seemed like a very Cambridge thing to do, but it's definitely not a requirement. Um, I have really enjoyed it because I really like the team aspect of it. Um, and it's quite different if you've never done a sport like rowing before. So I'd seen the rowing machine in the gym, I'd even tried it, but I didn't realise how much of like a full body workout it would be. And at first there are loads of like really technical terms I just didn't really understand. Like there's someone who sits at the front of the boat and just screams stuff at you. And at first I was like, what is going on? Um, but then you get used to it and there's a really good community aspect, I think, with rowing. Um, because obviously a lot of people have heard of it so there are usually a, quite a few teams on a college level um, and I'd just say yeah it's nice to meet as many people as possible and unfortunately we kind of have a reputation of making it like part of our personalities but I don't know that's up to date but yeah it's fun overall. Thanks Leona so the next question is what are the university gym facilities like and do you have to pay um, so I'm going to pass that over to you sir. Yep, so in terms of actual university uh, facilities, um, Oxford, we've got Iffley Sports Centre, for example, and we do have a main gym there alongside a smaller powerlifting gym as well. In all honesty, the powerlifting gym is small, but I think the way um, I'd say it is that the people actually make the gym and yeah it's really basic but actually uh, the people that make it the support that you can get there is quite good um, alongside the two gyms we've just spoken about colleges also have gyms as well and whether you have to pay for them or not that varies from college to college and colleges may also offer you the ability to get the main university gym for free as well but again that depends on the college in addition to that you also have the commercial gyms that are available and they're fantastic as well so you can use commercial gyms and then still uh, train at uh, Oxford Powerlifting Society, for example. So you've got the option to do either. Yeah, and the same principles um, apply for Cambridge. So there are um, gyms in colleges. And um, I know for my college that we have like a gym and it's free for all um, college members. But that does vary between colleges. Um, if you're looking for anything specific for, for example, um, like a university sports gym, you probably need to do some more research into that specific university and um, the college that you're at to see what is available near you. Um, but in general, the same principles do usually apply and um, there are other commercial gyms at Cambridge as well. So moving on to the last um, theme, it's going to be about finances, something that's very big, um, especially with sports because it's expensive to play sports. So um, I'm going to pass it over to Jed, who's going to talk about some financial support that you can um, look out for if you're looking to play university sports. Yeah, so there's a lot, there's a lot of to take advantage of. I think every college has at least a sports fund that I think I'm aware of. I think FIT is quite good because they encourage people to play sports and, and they don't want like your, your circumstances to be a barrier. Um, so I think you can apply, for example, Stash. If you want to get the, the kit and stuff like that, you can apply for a fund to get that. Uh, if you're going on a tour and that you want to pay for flights, they'll, they'll contribute at least a certain amount of money so you can go on that tour. So um, there's a lot um, to, to, to take advantage of, of and you don't want your, they, don't, they don't want your background to be uh, a barrier to that at all. Thanks, Jed. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Rosie if she wants to add anything. Yeah, so like the level of funding tends to like vary depending on the level of sport that you play. So 
for CUAC, so the Athletics Club of Cambridge, uh, the club reimburses any fees for competition, whether this is like the entrance to the competition or traveling to a competition, hotels, etc. Um, at the college level, like Jed said, there's a lot of support available. So um, with athletics, our lovely treasurer has put together this big document with a list of all the college funding that's available. And I had a quick look through, through and there's anywhere like between £100 and £400 available, depending on your college and level of sport. And then at the university level, they have the Talented Athlete Scholarship Scheme. So this is usually you'd be nominated by your sport and governing body. So like if you're ranked number one or compete um, internationally, there's the Hawks and Ospreys clubs, which is specific to Cambridge. So the Hawks is like the men's sports club and then the Ospreys of the women. Um, they both offer a lot of different grants for equipment, competition costs, etc. cetera. Um, and then finally, there's also the university um, like talented athlete, like performance pathway um, program. So that's for if you're like, nationally ranked or compete internationally which you can apply for when you're here so you get a lot of help with like physios sports psychologists um, a lot of financial help as well thank you so much rosie and if you want if anyone wants more information about um the sporting um scholarships and funding that's available you can go to the athletics um facebook page i'm sure they'll be willing to answer your question that's okay thanks rosie and yeah. now I'll pass it over Alice to talk about the Oxford Oxford side. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have the same scheme that Cambridge do in terms of a individual blues performance scheme, which has physio and individual psychology sessions and strength and conditioning. If you're a top level athlete, our equivalent sort of the Hawks and Offsprey's is Vinnie's um, Vincent's Club, and they have a range of scholarships which you can apply for if you're part of the university. There are also a number of other scholarships through our sports federation, which you can apply for if you're competing at a higher level. But um, in general, the colleges do also have financial support if you're playing university support, sport, and that is very similar to Cambridge. Um, the funding you get does vary college to college and depending on the level of sport that you're playing at too. Thank you. I just have a final question just to ask everyone to give a very brief answer. And um, yeah, sorry to put you all on the spot. Um, but what has been your best experience um, playing for your different sports teams or playing your different sports? So the first person I'm going to go to is Jed. Um, what can I say? I would say that just the whole like going to training, meeting people, like the whole, like the improvement, like people want you to improve. Like, like if that's what you're there for, like if you want to see yourself improve throughout the whole year, people are there for that. And they want to, they want to help you improve in that way. So like the coaching is very good. Like, and just the general camaraderie of people, like everyone's there, to, like no one's, there's none of this kind of rivalry in, in the group. So I think that's just, yeah, it's good. It's a good distraction from the academics. I think that's uh, what I enjoy the most. Um, Fran? Sorry that I was just smiling for like the past two minutes because all I could think about when you said that was um, the moment where we actually beat Cambridge in our annual varsity game just to spark some more rivalry. Um, I guess I mean that was my first varsity game and the whole of the year we were essentially almost building up to this massive game that's played at the end of the year um, in our third term of university and it was just such a nice moment um, just to see our, all our hard work kind of paying off and it was just such an important moment of community for us and it was so enjoyable and we beat Cambridge so <laughs> what more? <laughs> um, Alice? I have to continue on a similar theme. Uh, last year in our varsity match, we beat Cambridge um, and it was a bit of history because it was the fourth time we'd beaten them 4-0. And it was just a really exciting, intense day because it came down to the final events with um, my team winning by just one point. Um, so that was amazing. But in general, the best thing about the club, I have to say, is the people. Um, so Rosie? Um, so my favourite moment was probably competing for Freshers Varsity, which we beat Oxford at, <laughs> just to add to the rivalry going. 
Um, so it was just such an incredible thing to be part of, especially as a fresher and being new to sport, like the team atmosphere and the like older members of the club were there to help support us and kind of encourage us during the day. And it like started to rain and like, even though like the weather was awful, like people were still running around the track, like cheering for different people and like quite similar, like it literally came down to the relays and it was just such an incredible atmosphere to be a part of. And like, it just felt like such a family and such a lovely club. And yes, that was definitely my favorite moment. Leona? Um, so my story isn't one of winning, but it was still really fun. <laughs> um, so it was like my first proper race at the end of second term. And as I said before, I'm not very physically fit. And I just remember in the moment, it was really difficult. Um, and like two minutes in, my legs just went, but you just had to keep going. Um, and just having everyone from my college, like literally running <laughs> like the length of the river, just cheering us on and everyone just cheering each other on was just so nice and definitely a highlight for me. Ted? Uh, yeah, mine's quite boring, but I think it was probably just winning the, um, the cricket cuppers um, in my first year. Cuppers like that intercollegiate tournament between it's a big knockout on between all the colleges in Cambridge and um, we won that in my first year which was quite surprising and yeah it was a great experience. Thanks um, and lastly Yusuf. So it was probably during a powerlifting competition not against Cambridge where it was the first time that I lifted um, 200 kg from my deadlift and to have everyone like cheering you on and to be able to think oh actually I, I didn't think I could do it but with everyone cheering you on you, you know I was able to break past that so that was quite good. Thank you so much. Thank you all for sharing your experiences. Now I'll pass it on to Natalie to conclude. Um, so thank you to all our panellists and thank you to everyone watching. Um, check out the Inside Uni YouTube channel and remember to like and subscribe and also check out our website which will be linked in the description.